What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another video. This is a very different kind of video. In today's video, we're going to dive into the world of building Android apps with Jetpack Compose, the Swift UI equivalent on Android. Now it's not lost on me that this is iOS Academy, so before the pitchforks come out, let's uh, take a pause, actually figure out what Jetpack Compose is and see what it can do. So I've got Android Studio here and you obviously needed to work with this. We're gonna create a new project here and I'm gonna fumble my way through Jetpack Compose. We're gonna stick with a empty Compose activity. I'm gonna go ahead and call this application Compose Basics. We'll keep our package name as is. The irony of having iOS Academy as a package name on an Android app. We'll go ahead and continue. And just like that, we'll be thrown into the world of Android Studio. Now, I found it very fascinating working with Jetpack Compose recently. And I wanted to show on this channel the world on the other side in terms of platforms. So pretty interesting to follow along. Go ahead and drop a like down below, if not for Android, definitely for the fact that I'm fumbling my way through the world of Jetpack Compose for y'all. So on the left hand side here, we have our main activity, which is basically where your Android app launches into. But the thing we'll focus on is not the constructs of the Kotlin programming language, but the declarative nature of the Compose UI framework. So very similar to Swift UI, we use declarative UI to build things out. And we have a handy preview on the right, very familiar from Xcode. And we're gonna build a simple to-do list app. So this set content up here is basically where everything gets started. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna abstract this piece into another composable function called app. Composable functions are basically similar to view builders where we can define a func by the keyword of fun because apparently functions are func. And inside of here, we're gonna jot everything down. Similarly, down in the preview, instead of using this uh, compose basics theme and greeting, we're just gonna have our preview show our app. We can go ahead and hit this link at the top right to build and refresh this preview, and we should see a Android app pop up just like that. So I'm gonna hopefully try to go through this quickly and explain things piece by piece. So we'll be working here in our app. First and foremost, we see this Compose Basics theme. A theme is a wrapper component where we can get access to various theming related constructs, things like colors, typography, shapes, and the likes. Within that, we have another wrapper for a surface. Think of this as a background. We have a color on this, which is our background color. We have a, another property here for a fill max size. And very similar to SwiftUI, we can also leverage modifiers, hence modifier here, to style things and modifier orders does matter. So we'll go ahead and get rid of this greeting thing in here, which is this additional fun function down here. And we're gonna get started building out our basic to-do list. Now, our to-do list is going to be nested inside of a column. So very similar to vertical stacks and horizontal stacks, we can bring in a column or a row. The first thing we're gonna to want to have inside our column is a title, which is aptly named text. Our text is going to be to-do list, maybe with an exclamation mark, because it's really cool. And we wanna stylize this to make this look a little nicer. Now, instead of our live preview from Xcode updating, we do need to sometimes hit build and refresh or the keyboard shortcut for things to show up. So let's go ahead and stylize this text a little bit. We're gonna use some arguments as well as some modifiers. So the first thing we're gonna do is bring in a font size, and I'm gonna bring in a font size of perhaps 32.sp. SP is a unit and uh, Android Studio here is telling me to go ahead and hit this to import it. We'll also go ahead and bring in a font weight. We're gonna want this to perhaps to be a little bold since it is in fact our title. So we'll go ahead and look for bold here. Let me go ahead and hit refresh and make sure that I haven't destroyed this app yet. All right, looking pretty good. Now everything is really close to the edge of the screen, so we kind of want there to be a little bit of space, so that should ring bells of a spacer or some padding. So padding, you can probably guess, is a modifier. So we'll go ahead and bring in a modifier, and this is going to be a modifier dot uh, padding, so we can say padding, and we're gonna go ahead and perhaps say 12.dp, once again, another unit. It'll ask me to import it, and we'll aptly uh, get that import and bring it on in. Go ahead and hit that button to refresh and things are looking a little better now and I think this is ship ready. We should probably add some functionality. Now that there's a title up there, it'd be pretty cool to add a text field that we can actually type stuff into. Otherwise our to-do list app is slightly useless. Right below this label or text, 
we're going to add a outlined text field. So an outline text field is kind of what it sounds like. It's a field with an outline, big surprise. And by default, it takes in two arguments, one for our value, which is a thing we're going to have a binding to, is what we would call it in Swift UI, the actual text, as well as a on value change, which takes a lambda, which gets called every single time the value changes. So here we get to something interesting in the world of Jetpack Compose. How do we handle state? There are a variety of ways to actually do so, but the one we're going to talk about a lot in this video is mutable state of in a remember block. So up here, we're going to go ahead and say var item by remember. And inside of this, we'll say this is a mutable state of, let's see if I can go ahead and find it. There it is, mutable state of, and we're going to want this to be a string. It's going to start off as a empty string, hence the quotes underlining in red since we need to import the getter and setter for this. So we'll go ahead and use the shortcut to bring it on in. And this value down here can now be assigned to item. Every single time the user types, we want to change item to be it. It is the keyword that you're going to use here specific to the Kotlin language. Don't want to go too deep into that, but that's basically what this is doing. Similar to SwiftUI, we want a label in here to also indicate to the user what the heck this field is for. So we can use a text in here and specify that this is for a new item. We can go ahead and hit the shortcuts, which is Option Command Shift R on a Mac to give this a build and run and we'll see it in our preview here. So looking pretty good so far. Once a user has entered an item, we also want to have a button where they can hit to save the item so it shows up in a list right below this field. We want that save button to be on the right hand side of the field and this is where we're going to introduce a row. We'll abstract this into a row and presumably we want to also break this down into separate composable functions for better testability, but I'm going to keep it simple and keep it uh, as a single monstrosity for this video. So we now have a row here and right below this uh, outlined text field, we're going to add a button that'll show up on the right hand side. So the buttons autocomplete has given us this on click, which will be the handler for the button. And I'm going to give a text in here and this will be nothing more than just save. In terms of on click, if you think about it, what do we actually want to do? Well, we first want to check that the new item that we are typing in, which I've called item, is not empty. We don't want to save empty new items into our list. And if it's not empty, we want to add this to an array of to-do list items. So let's come up here and create a mutable list of items. So we're going to say items, plural, is going to be a mutable list of, and it'll ask me for the type, and it's going to be of type string. So if we have a item and it is not empty, we can simply go ahead and say items dot add item, and we're going to empty out the item string so our field gets reset. Now that we're actually doing that, one thing that's pretty cool that's important to know about is once we refresh our preview, there's a little icon at the top right hand side of our preview that occasionally decides to show up or not show up. It looks like it actually just disappeared. Let's go ahead and see if we have an error here. We might actually have a build error. I see we have an IDE error. Let's try that one more time. But you can deploy to an actual emulator to test out your behavior. Now before I close and reopen Xcode, let's actually, or Android Studio I should say, let's continue. So we now have this row with a field and a button. When we tap on the button, if we have an item with a non-empty string, we append it by adding it and then we clear it out. The next important thing, and rather the last piece, I should say the last important piece, is we should probably render these, uh, these uh, to-do list items. So we have this uh, column here with a text and a row. Right below it, I'm going to add a divider for just some visual separation. And then we're going to do something interesting, very similar to what we would do in the SwiftUI world. We can introduce a, another column, imagine a list. And inside of here, we're going to say for item in items. And for each of the items, we want to render another component. And that composable is going to be with the thing we have down here that I'm going to rename to a to-do list item, which takes in a parameter of name. So we'll say to do list item name, which will be item just like that. And essentially what we're doing down here is we're basically just returning for now 
a single label with a particular string, which will be a name. So I'll go ahead and give this a refresh on the right hand side. Hopefully this button doesn't disappear once more. And once it's actually there, we can actually tap this little button that says deploy preview. And it's going to give it a run in a emulator. Imagine this as the same thing as the iOS simulator. So you just gotta bear with it a few seconds and it'll show up. And here we actually have an actual working Android app. We'll type in here, let's say, I don't know, go on run because health is important. And we're gonna hit the save button and it shows up right below it. Now things are a tad bit ugly. First of all, we need some padding for these items. We also wanna move the save button and wouldn't it be cool if we can tap on one of these items and change the color indicating that we've finished that to-do list item. So for padding, let's go back to this button. We're gonna once again leverage modifiers and we'll go ahead and say here a modifier. Let's try that one more time. Modifier is going to be modifier and it actually already told me padding because it probably knows how ugly this looks. We'll say 14.dp and down here for our to-do list item composable, we're gonna wrap this whole thing inside of a surface. We'll go ahead and add a text there I'm going to add a divider right below it, and on this text, we're going to leverage a modifier of padding, very similar, and perhaps we'll also stick with 12 dp here. Let's go ahead and hit this button to refresh our preview, and we're not going to actually see any elements in here because our to-do list starts off as empty. Once done, we'll hit this button to deploy to this emulator on the right-hand side, which is going to refresh. We'll go ahead and type one of these in, and we're looking a little better. Okay, cool, so we can't particularly tap on any of these items here. Let me add one more, let's say, I don't know, eat lunch, because it is in fact lunchtime. We can't tap on these at the moment, nothing in fact is happening. So when we tap on it, we want to change the background color. I'll collapse this while we actually work on our code here. So what we wanna do is we want the surface thing to be tappable. If we only make the text label for the to-do list item tappable, we'll need to tap on a very particular part of the screen to get something to happen. We're gonna add some parentheses here and a surface can take a variety of modifiers as well as a background color. So I'm gonna say this takes a color, let's try that one more time. This takes a color and this color will be from our theme colors, which is material theme, I should say, material uh, theme off of this, we want this to be the background color. The additional thing that we want to do is add a modifier and similar to a Swift UI on tap gesture, we're gonna say modifier and we want, not padding, we actually want, I believe it is on click, we want clickable. When we click on this, we wanna change the selection state. So again, you heard that word state, we wanna have some state. So we're gonna say var is selected by, remember, mutable state of, and this mutable state is gonna start off as false. We wanna have all of these elements be not selected, and whenever we tap on it, we're gonna flip the state. What does that mean? That means is selected is going to equal the inverse of is selected. Now that we selected it and we're holding this state and we're remembering it between component redraws when the composable framework, Jetpack Compose, refreshes the component hierarchy, we should probably reflect that on the to-do list item. So what we're going to do is we'll abstract this color into another local variable here. We'll say color is this guy. And if is selected, we'll change this color. So instead of it being our background color, we'll go with the primary apps color, which I believe will be the purple looking color we see on the right hand side. And here we'll bring in color. Let's go ahead and give this a run. Let's make sure everything is building and I haven't made a silly typo. We'll deploy it into our emulator and we will have finished making our very simple first to-do list app with Jetpack Compose. All right, looks like no errors. We've got our field. Let's go ahead and type in get milk, even though I don't need to actually do this. We'll type in maybe go running, make Android app. And one thing you'll notice is we need to flip the list so it's actually most recent to the top, but I'm not gonna go into the weeds of that. But let's say we've actually gone ahead and made an Android app, which in fact we have. We can go ahead and tap it. Boom, changes color. We can untap it if I just deleted this project. And there you have it, you've built a pretty sweet uh, functional Android app in 
quite a short amount of time and with a very small amount of code. So one thing that I really want to focus on, and of course I'm aware we're not persisting these to-do list items to disk or a database, is how similar Jetpack Compose and these component trees are to SwiftUI. Of course, the naming is different with things like surface and things like columns and rows versus V stacks and H stacks. But look how similar the nomenclature is to SwiftUI for those of you that are familiar with the world of SwiftUI and iOS. And for those of you that are only familiar with Android, or maybe you came across this video by virtue of searching for Android, go ahead and take a look at SwiftUI videos and see how similar it is. One thing that I really love about this declarative nature of these new frameworks on mobile, as well as you know similar frameworks on the web, is they're very similar to work with. They're similar constructs in terms of using remember rememberful uh, mutable states to hold on to data in the Swift UI world known as states and bindings. And the framework intelligently redrawing parts of your component tree that are actually needed to be redrawn as a virtue of changing state and data. So that is all I've got for you guys today. This is Jetpack Compose for iOS and Swift UI newbies. I would encourage you to download this and give it a shot. It's pretty cool. Let me know in the comments below if you have used Compose before, what you think, if you still think iOS is the greatest thing ever since sliced bread. Drop a like if you haven't done so already. Hit subscribe if you're into, uh, I would say iOS, but I guess tech in general now. We'll see if this channel name ever changes. But thanks again for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.